Better than I didn't even think about that. Uh-huh. I hear this murmur running through there. I'm gonna know why. Where's I'm gonna blame him, not you? Okay. This is the promised land of God's love. Turn me down, Gina. Look around and see God's love reflected on each face. This is a place where people are cared for and nurtured. You are loved here. This is the promised land of God's love. What we're going to do this morning is called the beginning and the end.
Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad you're with us. For those of you who are watching on Facebook Live this morning, the bulletin and the hymns were sent to you in your weekly email, so you can download those to follow along this morning. Um, for those of you who are in attendance, in front of you in every pew is a little card to register your attendance today, so if you can fill those out, place them in the basket in the back. Also, you can place your offerings in the basket in the back as well. Next Sunday, we'll have communion, so if you are going to watch on Facebook Live, you need to have your elements ready. If you come to worship in person next Sunday, you'll be given to communion elements when you arrive at worship. This Saturday, we're going to participate in Trunk or Treat out of the parking lot. It's from 4 to 6 p.m., so if you want to come help us with that, pass out candy, we're going to do that in the safest way possible, and then... Um, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to cut pop bottles. Is that, would that be correct? Yeah, so, so um, that's next Saturday, this coming Saturday, actually, from 4 to 6. And don't forget next week that you need to fall back. So we get an hour. So if you, if you don't fall back, you're going to be at church early. That's okay. I'll be here. So if you want to come early, that's okay. Um, and today, before we go any further, today is Kay Hunt's birthday. Happy birthday, Kay. I, uh, I teased her earlier when she walked in. I said, the old lady's here. And she she immediately knew who I was talking about. And so um, I guess it was, I guess, that's, so anyway, when we gather for worship, either on Sunday morning or on Wednesday at 10 o'clock or any other time, we always light the Christ candle. The Christ candle is a reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. And so in this place, or at home where you are, I invite you to breathe deeply the presence of the Holy Spirit as we gather for worship this day. So may the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Prepare your hearts now as we listen to Jen and play the prayer.
everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You have showered your love upon all generations since the beginning of time. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Guiding us now through this time of worship and into the week ahead. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. During the opening prayer, I ask that you please pray to yourself. God, you are God forever. This alone is cause for celebration. But we also know that you are your people. As we feel your love washing over us now, may we love you with every part of our being, heart, mind, body, and soul. We celebrate your love in our lives, and we ask for your help as we try to, our best to boldly share the good news of, our, of your love with others. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who models the way for us. Amen. You can be seated.
So I would invite those who wish to have their children baptized along with their godparents to please come forward. gather now to celebrate the gift of grace in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us all. They were bringing children to Jesus that Jesus might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw she could come up, or you can take her out. <laughs> come on, Grandma. They were bringing children to Jesus, that Jesus might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, Jesus was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them. For to such belongs the realm of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, and laid his hands upon them. Jesus came to John to be baptized by him, but John tried to make him change his mind. I ought to be baptized by you, John said, yet you have come to me. Jesus said, let it be so for now, for in this way we shall do all that God requires. So John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water, then heaven was opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down out like a dove and lighting on him. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my own dear Son, with whom I am well pleased. At another time, Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible grace. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life, forgiven of sin, and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. Okay, so I'm going to start with you guys first, Dustin and Mindy. Carter. 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 No, Carter. So, Dustin and Mindy, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say we do. We encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and receive the freedom of new life in Christ. If so, we will be well with the help of God. And will you teach this child that he may be led and profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, we will with the help of God. And do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow the way of our Savior, to resist the oppression of evil, and to show love and justice and witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best we're able? If so, we do with the help of God. And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help this child be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that he may be led to affirm his baptism. Yes, so we we do with the help of God. Oh, yeah. Tiffany and Jesse, you have been asked to be husband's godparents. Will you take that job seriously? Will you love him and guide him and Give him all the things that he needs in life moving forward. So make sure we will with the help of God. I invite you all to stand if you're able. 
Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the ones about to be baptized as they live and grow in Christ? If so, answer, we promise our love, support, and care. You can be seated. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed a firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth and the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, we sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all nations by water and the Holy Spirit. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water, and by your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in all baptized this day, that they may rise with Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be. Amen. <laughs> what name shall be given this child? That's the name. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll be back. It's so funny that she assumed I knew his name. <laughs> this is Hudson Lee Oates, the newest baptized member of this household of faith. And this is Woody, if you don't recognize him. Yeah. And, his, and his name. Hudson is... Is my grandson. He's all of our grandson. And you know, we make these amazing promises, we make for make for girls. That we're gonna do some important things. Make for me things like by people of this church. To love, support, and care to the ones about being baptized. And their parents, John and I, Tony Pinney, Jeff Pinney, we make promises too, right? Who's there? Did we say he had will? Does it feel overwhelming to you? A little bit. It doesn't mean you're not asking. It feels like an overwhelming thing. But the good news about this is that all of us, the body of Christ, make these promises. And we do that to live our lives in certain ways. And so, Hudson is the newest member of this household. Weston's Godparents. 
Will you love him? Will you give him the guidance he needs? Will you say yes no matter what to anything that he ever needs? <laughs> and when you do that faithfully, so much that we do with the help of God. What name shall we give in the show? Rustin This is Weston Michael, the newest member of this household of faith. And he is my grandson as well. Uh -oh, you guys come to your and like everyone else, these promises that we make as parents and as doctors. Child of blessing, child of promise is on the screen. I'm not going to sing along.
why. So prayer concerns to share with you this morning before we pray together. Uh, J.D. had his knee replaced last week and two weeks ago. And he's doing, as you can tell, he's doing pretty well. Um, welcome with his walker. So he need to pray for J.D.'s healing. John Guy is having his knee replaced on Friday of this coming week. So we'll pray for John. Um, same doctor, I believe, Dr. Barron. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Barron is a very wealthy man. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. I, I know him, actually. And he's got the nicest shoes you'll ever want to own. I hate to know what he, I hate to know what he paid for those shoes. He's going to name one John and one JD, though. <laughs> also, um, Madison Skorupski's friend, Laura, was in a very bad car accident. When was that, Gina? Friday night. On Friday night. And she's paralyzed from the belly button down. Um, happened on 274. So, um, continue the prayers for Laura and her family. You may have remembered months ago that we've been praying for Eric Young, Marilyn's son, um, has a brain tumor. Um, his last MRI came back, and that tumor has grown a little bit. And so he needs to seek out some other kind of treatments. So we'll continue to pray for Eric as well. Not going to have it today, huh? Okay. Holy God, it is in the waters of baptism. This is the gift of grace and love. It is in the reminder of our own baptism that you call to us. You remind us of your love for us. You remind us of our parents' love for us. You remind us of the church we were baptized in. And those faithful people who, who made these promises. God, help us in this time and in this place to remind ourselves of your love for us. This outward and visible sign of this inward and invisible grace that is ours this day. And so, God, for baptism for Hudson and Weston, for their parents and godparents, we give you thanks and ask for your blessings in their lives. God, we come before you. You called us to pray. And so, God, this morning we continue to pray for J.D. and his healing. Pray for John in his upcoming surgery and for healing. We pray for Laura as she struggles. We pray for her family and doctors who care for her and for healing in her young body. We continue to pray for Eric and ask God for your blessings and your healing power in his life. We pray for many others, God, who, who need to know of your healing power. We pray, God, that you'll surround them with your love and your grace, and that they might know of your peace and your presence in their lives. We pray for our world, God, that struggles in the midst of the pandemic. We pray for places that struggle with fires. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless and look for, for a place to lay their head. We pray, God, for your presence in our lives. Without you, we are lost. And so we pray, God, that you will draw us close, that you'll be what we need in our lives to sustain us and to nurture us and to send us forth from this place to be bearers of good news. We ask God that you'll hear our prayers, that you'll surround us with your grace, and you'll send us forth as bearers of good news. We give you thanks and praise God for all things. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who when the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray, he taught them this prayer. In fact, you pray with me the Lord's Prayer on the screen this morning. 
We're not going to have it either. Didn't we die back right there? It's, so, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So for weeks and weeks and weeks, it seems like even more weeks, we've been hearing about Moses. We began all the way back with the plagues. Does anybody remember all the way back when we started with the plagues? And we've been hearing this conversation and this ongoing journey from being slaves in Egypt to their long 40-year journey to the Promised Land. All of that has been conversations about deliverance, about God's presence in their life. God got angry with the people. Moses had to change God's mind. The people were hungry. The people were thirsty. They were unsure about the future. And the entire time, God has been present with them through the person of Moses. And this morning, we arrive at the end of this. And it's an interesting conversation that we're going to hear. I want you to listen close to the scripture but I want to begin with this. The other day, I was in a conversation with someone who said, is there a scripture, is there a story, is there something in the Bible that you learned or just learned that's made a difference in your life? And so I got to thinking about that, and I've been, as you know, playing it ahead for these weeks, and Dale and I had a conversation a couple weeks ago about this scripture. Remember, Dale? about the death of Moses. And I read this, and several weeks ago, when I was planning for this, I read the scripture to Betsy. I said, Betsy, I want you to listen close to this. And so I read it to her, and I thought I read it rather slow, and she said, okay. And so I said, Betsy, did you get it? And she said, Jim, which she often says to me, Jim, so I read it again. Then she said, wait a minute. This scripture, this story, this little piece in here, I've been doing this for 36 years. And I have to tell you, this particular story has changed my life. And helped me to see God in a different way. And I want you to listen close. Okay? See if you pick up on it. Then Moses climbed about Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. The Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, and the land of Judah, as far as the western sea. The Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zohar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over to it. And Moses the servant of the Lord died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peel. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Did you all hear it? Don't say it, Dale. I know. Did you all hear it? What did you hear, Jimmy? That Moses was unable to 
fulfill his okay. destiny. Yeah, so so the big part of this story is that Moses had led the people of Israel for 40 years. Moses didn't get to cross into the promise. What else did you hear? Oh, yeah. It's God who buried Moses. Did you all hear that? It was God and Moses. And God took Moses to the top of Mount Nebo, and he let Moses look around. And from the top of Mount Nebo, he could see all of these places. He could see the promised land. And God said, all of these things that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you don't get to go. Does anybody know why Moses didn't get to go? Pat? Because when he hit the rock, he hit it twice. Right. When God told Moses to take the staff the second time and to strike the rock, Moses, the first time, took his staff, struck the rock, water came out. The second time, Moses might have gotten a little impatient, and he struck the rock twice. And because of his lack of trust, maybe, he didn't get to go. Moses and God. And God's showing Moses around. And the scripture says, the story goes, that Moses died there. And God buried him. Does anybody else, did you know that story before today? I, I have to tell you, I read this story over and over and over again. And I'm reminded that through all of our life, when we stand up here baptized as babies or even as adults or somewhere in between, when for the very first time, you know, Mike is here, we were out in the hallway when Weston was born. It took like, what, 30 seconds? <laughs> and what did we hear, Sarah? Wow! Weston's cry. We weren't that far away, but we weren't right outside the door. Well, you, I think you ended up outside. <laughs> his cry, his cry was so loud. And for the four of us, even though we'd done it before, it was, it was utter amazement, was it not? I was struck by this story because this God, who knew Moses his entire life, you know Moses, right? Moses who got sent down the Nile in a basket to save his life, right? A hundred and twenty years, God knew Moses. And his eyes weren't dimmed, and his strength wasn't weakened, but God showed him all of this and walked with him through his entire life. And it strikes me so powerfully that in this story that we live in utter dependence on God. I got to thinking about Moses, and you know, he had a hard time with the people of Israel. You know, he had to plead with God not to destroy them. God said that they were a stiff-necked people. Moses might have had his fill of the people of Israel. He might have said, oh, thank you, God, I'm done with them anyway. He, he might have said that. But God, in this amazing way, takes Moses, this Moses placed in a basket who's now 120. And God's love for Moses is so overwhelming that God buries Moses. 
What's also interesting to me in the story is that to this day, no one knows where Moses was buried. I think God did that on purpose too. No one needs to know. You see, God's, God's love for Moses, this, it, comes, it comes down to us. And God walks with us every moment of our life. And God surrounds us with mercy and grace. And it may be true of me, and it may be true of you, that we don't ever get to the promised land. But maybe, maybe the goal really isn't to get to the promised land. Maybe the best part of our journey in life is indeed the journey itself. When I came to St. Paul's in 1991, it was the first Sunday of October in 1991. Dustin, who stands up here with his little voice, was six weeks old. And I brought him to work with me all the time. And Dar was the office manager. And Dar would watch him once in a while. And Dar would change your pants, Dustin. <laughs> now, 30, how old are you, Dustin? 29, yeah. 29 years later, Dustin and Mindy and Kelsey and Connor stand up here with their own little people. You see, this guy, I thought I thought a lot about that this morning. I had a difficult week because this week was my dad's birthday. And I had a hard time with it. And my dad always wore this bracelet. You recognize this bracelet, Rachel? He wore, my mom gave, gave us a graduation present a long time ago. And mom said, dad always wore that on special occasions. And so last night I got in the rock box and I said, man, I'm wearing this bracelet today. You see, because this, this journey of ours, this journey of ours, the goal isn't necessarily the promised land. The goal, you see, is all in the journey. Rachel, I was thinking about you the other day. When you were a little baby. And thank God you don't know this. And maybe, maybe I shouldn't tell you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Rachel was at my mom and dad's. They lived in the country. And I went over there. And you weren't very old, Rachel. I don't think Bob knows this. I think the only person who knows this story is Grandma. And I almost dropped you. Rachel. No, you dropped one. Well, <laughs> not, yeah, on purpose the rest of the times, but not all the time. And I went home and I was so shook up. And I called Grandma Rachel. I said, Mom, I almost dropped her. But Mom said, you did it. Drop her. And Grandma's watching. She knows that story. And then, in our journey in life, Rachel and I thought, how many times did we fly down the steps in Mount Victory? I have no idea. Hundreds. <laughs> they had steps that curved. And Rachel sat on my lap, and we fly down a hundred miles an hour, Jake. Okay, like Rachel. Slam into the furnace. Life, you see, life, you see, is this amazing journey. And, and God, God knew Moses, and God's promise to Moses was that he would always be with him. And our lives are utterly dependent on the presence of God. And so for us, you know, this life, this journey that we live, this thing that we call faith in life, 
This way that our lives are forever changed is the way that God calls us to live these certain ways. In our lives, when we have failure, we don't always get the things we hoped for. God's present with us. God always gives us what God has promised. And the scripture says to us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither height nor depth, east or west, north or south, nothing separates us from the love of God. And so I read the story of Moses. And think about God's presence in his life. And he shows him all these things. He shows him all these things. And then in God's great love, God carries him there.
Thank you. 